Unlike Hollywood films, theater is more based on the truth of human complexity than anything that CGI can show it. Theater is based on truth. It's because whenever the plays were written, they're usually based on the social normities of the time period. And, and those social norms turn into archetypes. And two of the most popular archetypes that are shown in theater is the one of a southern belle and a victim. The first thing that comes to mind about a southern belle is their beauty and charm. This archetype usually involves a gorgeous woman, usually living on a plantation, and her struggle to find a husband. Another popular archetype, known as the victim, is presented mostly in Shakespeare's tragedies. Characteristics associated with this archetype is that the victim is stuck in situations they can't control, and they struggle to leave or live in these situations. Playwright Tennessee Williams was one of the first to ever challenge these archetypes. Williams wrote over 30 plays, all containing female characters that want to better their lives. But at this time in theater, the story arcs were usually only given to male characters. So why did Williams prefer a female's point of view? Well, he wouldn't have been able to evolve those stereotypes if it weren't for the influence of his mother, Edwina, and his sister, Rose. 1911. Born as Thomas Lanier Williams, Tom was raised in Columbus, Mississippi to traveling salesman Cornelius and his wife Edwina. Cornelius wasn't home much due to his occupation, so Edwina was left to raise Tom and his sister Rose. Edwina was a doting mother to her children. She spent special time with them, telling stories, teaching them proper Southern values, and being a dignified member of the community. In 1918, Cornelius received a steady job in St. Louis and moved his family into a small apartment where life started to take a turn. No one was happy with the change. Edwina became obsessed with meddling into her children's lives. She became so protective that she regularly fought with Tom about education and money. The only thing that kept Tom sane was his writing and his beloved sister, Rose. Rose was Tom's best friend and companion. The two were so inseparable that the caregiver of the Williams family used to call the children the couple. They were so close that when one fell ill, the other imagined an illness to join the other. Rose was a shy and introverted girl. Under the care of Edwina, she was pressured into becoming a Southern charmer just like her mother. As she grew older, her insecurities damaged her mental health. After being diagnosed with what doctors thought was schizophrenia, she underwent a prefrontal lobotomy in 1943. After the surgery, she was not able to connect with Tom the way they used to. Williams never forgave himself for Rose's state after the surgery. Tennessee Williams admitted that the inspiration for his Broadway hit, The Glass Menagerie, was based on Edwina and Rose. It was the character of Amanda Wingfield that changed the archetype of a Southern Belle. Amanda is a mother who puts too much attention on her children and cannot move on from the past she still desires. A past filled with beautiful social occasions, gentlemen callers, and adoration. Unlike her usual archetype, Amanda is a fading Southern Belle. By the time the audience meets Amanda, she is no longer in her prime and is a single mother struggling to provide for her children. Williams challenges the archetype again in his play Summer and Smoke. Alma Weinmiller is a Southern Belle who is in love with a doctor named John. Alma complains about her anxiety to John only to be diagnosed with suppressed sexual desires. This topic was unheard of, especially for a female character. Suppressed sexual desires was a characteristic only represented in rich males. This is only another example of how Williams trusted his female characters to take on controversial topics. In The Glass Menagerie, the character of Laura Wingfield challenges the archetype of a victim. Laura is a shy girl who constantly feels insecure towards herself and her family. With a small limp in her leg, Amanda treats Laura like a broken bird. The only thing that keeps her calm is her collection of glass animals. 
Like her mother, Laura likes to retreat into her fantasies when under stress. At the end of the play, she goes to her glass animals, but finds no relief. She evolves from the victim archetype because she is brainwashed by her own insecurities and the strong expectations placed upon her by her mother. Another known victim in Williams' plays is Stella Kowalski from A Streetcar Named Desire. Stella is a pregnant housewife who lives in a loveless marriage with Stanley. The two have a great beginning towards their marriage filled with love and sex, but soon the relationship isn't enough for Stanley, and he goes back to his life of drinking and gambling. And whenever Stanley doesn't get what he wants, he becomes violent towards Stella. And for one reason or another, she stays with him. Stella is a victim of circumstance because by the end of the play, she wants to leave Stanley, but she can't. As a woman, she is unable to provide for herself and her baby because she has never entered the workforce. And even if she could leave, she'd have nowhere else to go. Her parents are dead, her sister institutionalized, and no family home to protect her. William's female characters are all survivors. They do and say whatever they can to survive. And that's no matter what archetyped they are. Tennessee Williams wrote over 30 plays, two novels, and dozens of short stories depicting the complexity of human survival. Williams' plays are performed all over the country, and The Glass Menagerie is currently reviving on Broadway for a limited two-month run. And audiences are still captured by the women Williams created.